Hey, what's going on everybody? It's your boy Journeyman here. I got a crazy neck beard right now because I just got back from a basically one month vacation. I mean, well, half of it was for work and then half of it was, was personal like vacation, but it was awesome. We did a bunch of like hiking. We ate a bunch of yummy food. Uh, a friend of ours got married. I mean, just really awesome stuff, right? So, but I'm back and hard at work at uh, you know all the upcoming episodes, trip number 10 coming down the pipe here. But it's funny, during the trip, it was actually probably like my third day or so during this uh, vacation or whatever that I was on, uh, I was asleep and I had, lo and behold, yet another astral projection experience. And this one was one that took me the furthest that I've ever gone. And I say further, it was actually a very uh, like tiny experience. I mean, it didn't last long at all, but I went the furthest I'd ever went. And the reason I say that is because I really feel that this time I actually achieved what I would call like full separation, albeit probably still a low energy separation. And uh, there's a really interesting video uh, by uh, one of the guys that I follow about uh, astral projection about what a low energy uh, astral projection is like. I'm gonna put that link up here somewhere. Um, but, but that video gives you an idea of what low energy astral projection is like. And my first experience that, you know, where I fell through the floor right down here or whatever and <laughs> landed in the garage and saw my wife come home, that was what I would probably call a very low energy experience. I didn't fully separate. And the reason why I know I didn't fully separate is because I didn't get the feel as if I was actually there. It looked like I was just looking through my eyes. Like I could still feel like I was laying down on the couch in a way. Uh, there, there were a couple times that I felt like I uh, got into like a 360 degree, like what they call the void state where you're surrounded by, by essentially just darkness. But there's something peculiar that I noticed about that as well is that if I just cross my eyes right now, like I'm going to close my eyes and cross my eyes with my eyelids closed, you know, I get that same kind of feeling. It, like if, if you do that, like I want you to try that, like close your eyes and then cross your eyes a little bit. Then what you'll feel is like almost like a tug from your head that feels like you're being pulled up and away in a way. That's what I feel anyway. And so I think there's a lot of psychosomatic kind of stuff going on still where it's like you, you, I'm, I'm inadvertently crossing my eyes and I feel like I'm being pulled up and out and into what I think is the void state and it probably isn't. But I can tell you that I've had, uh, so regardless, regardless of that, crossing the eyes and thinking that I'm in the void state, um, I still do think that, that you know, the experience that I had where, where I fell into the garage and saw my wife, you know, pull into the garage and all that stuff. I do think that that experience was, for lack of a better word, real. I think it really did happen the way I felt and experienced it. Uh, but I still don't think that I'm achieving full separation. And one of the things that people say is a precursor, like when you truly know that you're truly in the void state, is you, you, you see and feel energy. Um, a lot of people call it like static and you'll hear a static buzzing and um, you can see static apparently too. Uh, the, some people call it snow, etc., a static or whatever. So I can tell you that um, in the past um, few times that I have had uh, what I would call an astral projection kind of like experience, I did hit that state. There were a couple times in the past a couple months or whatever where I did the direct method where you lay down and, and you know, basically meditate and pretend like you're going to sleep and, it, and that's, you know, tricks your body into thinking it's asleep and you enter the void state. There were a couple times that I did that and it, and it actually worked. And when I say a couple times, I tried maybe 10 times and it only worked like twice. Uh, it's, it's really, it's tough for me. now. I just said that, right? I just said it's tough for me. There was someone who commented uh, on one of my astral projection videos that says, that he, yeah, he said, dude, like you're saying that it's tough and that's a mental blocker right there. Like, like you need to stop thinking and saying that it's tough. So I'm gonna stop, I'm gonna try my best to stop that. But for the sake of this 
video and for rhetorical purposes, I will just say it, it is for me pretty, pretty tough. Now, that, hopefully that'll be the last time I ever say that. Uh, <laughs> but this is such a mental gymnastic kind of thing that you have to do with all this. And, and see right there, I'm already still talking myself into failure. Um, but anyways, regardless, um, two out of like 10 times that I tried it, it actually reached to the state where I saw static and felt and heard static too, uh, kind of like an energy surge, if you will. And it looked something like this. And then on one of those experiences, I saw another hallway I saw uh, the hallway open up into this giant, I'm talking like edifice or building kind of mo monolithic, just giant structure. Um, and that's about all the cool things that happened. Uh, I didn't like, you know, separate from my body. I just saw interesting things in my uh, hip hypnagogic, hypnagogic, whatever they call it, uh, visuals. Um, and then all, and then, of course, there have been some other examples um, where it's the indirect method and very indirect in the sense that I didn't set an alarm. Like, you're, like to do the indirect method, you set an alarm that cuts off about two and a half or three hours worth of your normal sleep. And then you get up and you wake up for a little bit and then you go back to sleep. And then you can kind of trick yourself into getting into the, um, you know, the void state or the sleep paralysis. You can you can trick yourself into doing that. I wasn't even doing that. Uh, I, I, sometimes when I'm just sleeping, I will spontaneously wake up and feel the lead blanket. And I've been reading this book and it basically tells you, um, and it's been helping with me, it basically tells you to, w if you ever wake up or feel yourself enter that lead blanket kind of energy state, that you're supposed to kind of like just relax and, and just don't freak out because the tendency is to freak out. Like, oh my gosh, I'm in the state. And then you only, if you start freaking out like that, you only have like mere seconds before you're, you're out and you're either awake or you're back to sleep or whatever. And you're just regardless out of that situation. So I have, since the, you know, that last amazing astral projection experience I had, there have been maybe four or five times that I've been asleep and entered into that lead blanket energy uh, feeling. And each time that it happened, I kind of remember the, what I read and I try to relax. And I'm, I'm kind of increasing my stay in that lead blanket uh, energy state more and more. And all of that culminated um, on my last experience with that, which was when I was in uh, Monaco on vacation. I was, um, you know, filming something for work basically. And that it was the, I think it was the second night that I was in Monaco. I was in my hotel room asleep and I woke up and I automatically felt that lead blanket wash over me kind of feeling. And then, um, usually accompanied with that feeling, you know, you, you, you feel and hear energy. Uh, like you hear like this buzzing and you know again people call it static whatever and so now that i'm more comfortable with that because a lot of i mean if you experience that for your first time you're not even going to really notice a buzzing noise you're just going to be freaking out and be like whoa what the hell is this and when you're very comfortable with it you can start picking up on these little nuanced um, details you know and so now that it's happened to me several times i'm able to focus more and chill out more and pick up those little nuanced details. And so this time I, I've definitely felt and saw, uh, I'm sorry, I'm, sorry, I'm, I'm going to get to the seeing part. I definitely felt and heard the uh, energy, you know, it's like the bzzz. And this time though, I actually saw it too. And so I was sleeping on my stomach and again, I woke up, felt the lead blanket wash over me, heard the energy, um, you know, and then, but this time I saw green, uh, like a green aura around me. And it was kind of like waving, it kind of almost resembled like, like waves splashing up on a shore kind of thing. And um, I, I can't really pick up on too much detail about, about that. But that's, that's all I remember is that it was green energy. 
it was, uh, you know, iridescent, and it, it seemed to like wash up in waves. And I remember thinking to myself, okay, you you are in that state, just relax into it and and, and and explore a little bit more. And so I did. Now, again, it's it's really hard to not get excited, so I did get a little excited. And I told myself, okay, before you get too excited and pop out of this experience, because it's, again, kind of difficult to get into that, uh, to that experience, go ahead and try to separate. And so I didn't try the, the log roll method this time, the barrel roll method. Um, this time I just decided I'm just going to sit up. And I did. And so th I'll never forget it. It was, it was Again, it was like laying face down in the ocean, and like a, I say the ocean, like on the shore, the beach or whatever, and imagine like green waves of energy, like the waves of the ocean are, are, are green waves of energy. And I just kind of set up. And this is how I know that I achieved some degree of separation, is that it felt real. Uh, in, in other words, I felt like that I was actually awake and uh, like I, I, I convinced myself, I was like, oh, dude, you're just awake. Uh, like, you didn't achieve any kind of separation, right? You, you just woke up and you set up. And, but I noticed that my vision wasn't normal. Um, it was a dark room, but I was seeing things still kind of staticky. So, so I still know, I still think that this is again a, a low energy kind of uh, separation. But I saw these staticky images that were brighter than they should be. And that was kind of my first indicator that I was like, eh, maybe this is actually separation. But all I saw really was like my bed and then the wall. And I saw like, uh, like the light switch and everything like that on the wall. I didn't really get a chance to get all the way up and out and look down at myself or anything like that or look around the room or leave the room or do whatever. Um, all I saw was my bed, the wall, but it felt real. It felt, in fact, it, it brought back those old feelings that I get on psychedelic um, experiences where it feels realer than real. And that's how I know that I'm making progress here is because to me it was, it was, it felt just as real, if not realer, than just straight up sitting up. And I forgot to mention this part, it's just, it's very important. It's like, how did I know that I wasn't just truly awake? And the reason I know that I wasn't truly awake is because I actually legitimately woke up after this experience. Like I, I was looking around the room, I felt like, I felt 100% like I was awake and could feel and see everything. And, and uh, I was like, oh, I'm just awake. And then moments later, I really woke up. And so that's how I know. And so it was, it was an awesome experience. Um, very, very cool. I can't wait to have my next one. Um, I'm going to start practicing more because I got to be honest, I've been doing a really crappy job of, of practicing um, astral projection. It, it's, you got to be disciplined basically to do it. And, and I also, you know, I've been putting a little bit too much faith, for, for lack of a better word, in kind of like, I don't know, logical, scientific analysis of, of astral projection and everything. And I, I need to kind of start letting go of that. I mean, the, the funny thing is my psychedelic experiences have showed me that there is, is a, a space and a realm, whatever you want to call it, a, a, you know, extra dimensions or whatever beyond ours that just don't operate under the same logical principles uh, as our, you know, tiny sliver of reality that we are blessed uh, to, to, you know, experience. And so I know that there are essentially magical things out there that science doesn't kind of like even enter into the equation, yet I'm still holding on to my science with everything that I got, right? My science and my logic, right? And, and I don't know, there's, there's several of you who have commented on my uh, videos and stuff that if, you, you, you know, I say several, there was one person in particular, I, I forget the name, I'll, I'll post the picture here, um, but he said basically like, dude, like the, you, you're being overly logical and scientific about that is hindering your progress. And I 
I'm starting to understand and, and, and fully agree with that because, I mean, guys, logic, as, as crazy as this sounds and as crazy as, like, I mean, if the old me heard me saying this, if the pre-psychedelic experience and astral projection experience me heard me say this, he would come over here and not only laugh in my face, but probably flip me off and punch me in the stomach too and be like, dude, you get out of my life. I'm never talking to you again. But science and logic needn't apply in the astral projection or psychedelic um, kind of what I would call the spirit world. Uh, it, it, it just... All bets are off there. And so, as much as I begrudgingly uh, kind of, uh, and you know, to my, uh, to, to my chagrin, I need to fully let go of that and start embracing some kind of mystical concepts like breath work and like energy kind of work and everything like that. And again, sounds bonkers crazy. But I'm going to tell you, if it helps me, well, why not give it a shot? Like, if it has the potential to help me, why shouldn't I do it? I mean, it, it, and I'll report back to you and let you know if it works or not, because I'm the eternal skeptic on this kind of stuff. And see, I'm already talking myself into uh, a bad situation by saying I, I come into this whole experience with doubt and blah, blah, blah. I'm going to try my best to open my mind up enough to... Um, you know, be open. I'm going to approach it like a child would and just have an open mind and be excited about it. And I'm going to see if it works. I'm going to try all the energy feng shui. I mean, I don't even know what I'm getting into, y'all. I'm going to try all the energy breathing and all this stuff. And um, I'll report back to you. Because again, if, if a crazy, um, nihilistic, atheistic, um, you know, science worshiper like me can do it, then you can do it. And so I'm going to jump in with open arms and give it a shot. It'll be fun and I'll report back. But yeah, that's, that was my astral projection experience this go around. And uh, I will let you know when the next one happens, of course, and I'll do a video on that. And just to let everyone know, of course, um, trip number 10, I'm hard, hard at work at that. You can see right there you know there's there's the timeline and everything it's looking pretty complicated right all my all my episodes are extremely complicated so many uh sound effects and music and stuff like that um so uh this one's going to be epic though y'all I've, I've said that a billion times and i mean it um that's it time to continue working on that one love you all i love you guys talk to you later uh, trip 10 coming soon Bye bye